Hey guys, Gia Quinto back with the series Essential Things and Where to Find Them. If you've been here before, you would know that we covered a little bit of Dark Souls 3, but we're going to be rewinding the clocks. And we're going to be going back to one of my favorite releases of all time, easily top 5. And that is Dark Souls 1, labeled now on Next Gen as Dark Souls Remastered. This version of the game is available on Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Dark Souls 1, when it came out years ago, was easily and is still to this day one of my top 5 favorite games of all time. In this series, we're going to be looking at essential items, weapons, accessories, and just things that you can use that will benefit you early on and hopefully later on in your playthroughs. I recommend that you guys experiment with all the items offered and craft and create the perfect build for you. These things are amazing in PvP and PvE, and I hope that you guys grow to enjoy some of the things offered through this set of videos. Now before I start, I just wanted to say, and people who played through the game can relate to me here, when you're starting out making your character, and it's time for you to choose your class, I highly recommend you go with the thief build. And that's because you're rewarded with a key that unlocks most doors early on. Now with this key, you have access to a few really nice things, two of which are going to be covered in this video. With all that being said, let's look at a nice hefty list of things that you can pick up right at the beginning of the game, once you beat your tutorial area and the crow drops you off at Lautrin. This video is going to be for beginners and it's also going to be for more seasoned players who may have forgot the location of things. We're going to be looking at mainly beginner areas and we're also going to go into a later one extremely early to pick up two very nice pieces that I highly recommend you go out of your way for. So once you get to the bonfire, what you're pretty much going to do is expend all your souls on leveling up and we want to start at zero or the closest number to zero because we're going to be doing a lot of dying. Once you're leveled up and ready to go, facing the upper pathways that lead to so many different things, you're going to grab the three humanity next to a well. Now if you're just starting the game off, let me just say do not use this humanity for healing purposes. Humanity can be used to restore physical human properties and will give you access to a list of beneficial features. Uh, one of those things is going to be linked and covered in this video. So now you're going to follow my character down the two flights of steps and the elevator which is going to lead you into a brand new area which has two of, in my opinion, just extremely useful things early on. And one of those things is absolutely amazing in PvP and PvE. So once you branch out and get off the elevator, you're going to part to the far left. You're going to see a ghoul to your right once you swing out of the open way. You're going to take him out and you're going to pick up the S-Stock, which in my opinion is one of the best overall weapons in the game for PvP and PvE. It is a dexterity, long-range rapier. So it's going to cover a fair amount of ground when you're thrusting and attacking enemies in front of you. And that's always super useful if you're taking on PvP early on, just because you have a nice advantage over most players. So once you pick that up, you're going to run across the two bridges, and this is why I tell you to expend every soul that you have and do what you need to, because you're going to die. We're going to pick up the Firekeeper soul, and we're going to take this ambush here, we're just going to die. And reason for that being is we can use this Firekeeper soul right off the get-go. This is an extremely useful item for any new player who needs a boost in healing, because the Firekeeper soul will boost the healing power of your Estus Flask. And I'm going to show you exactly where to take this. And you can do this more than once, so just keep that in mind. I'll probably cover every Firekeeper soul that I can, but there is a limit to the healing power that you can put in your Estus. So you're going to come down the steps again, uh, the first flight that will lead you to New Londo. You're going to speak to the NPC down here who is the Firekeeper, and you're going to reinforce your Estus Flask. Once you do that, you'll see Estus Flask plus one. If you made it past that long deal of text, congratulations. We're going to be moving on now. With our Estus Plus One and the new weapon in our arsenal, we're going to be taking on the elevator of New Londo once again, except we're going to be doing things a bit different here. 
Now, if you watched from the beginning, you would know that I suggested you going with the Thief class to get the Master Key, which unlocks quite a few doors early on in the game, which essentially just gives you access to potentially nice things for those daring enough to explore. So from the elevator, we're gonna, like I said earlier, do things a bit different. Instead of making a left, we're gonna hug a sharp right, and I'm gonna show that from the entranceway. So we're gonna go up here, we're gonna proceed up the flight of steps, and we're gonna utilize our master key. Be ready to die once again. Again, this video, I highly recommend you just run through with nothing. Don't use any humanity, don't use any souls, and don't go that way. I purposely showed that in this video, so nobody made the mistake of going that way just yet. You can if you've played through this game a million times, but I highly recommend you just stick to the beginner's route if you're new here. I definitely wanted to help those who are new to the game or just have been unfamiliar because they didn't play through. So we're going to come up on a undead dragon, and I'm going to show you exactly what all three of these items are. You're going to want to start from the far right, because once you pick up the two to the left, prepare to die. <laughs> With that, we pick up the Astora Straight Sword and the Dragon Crest Shield. Both of these items are extremely useful, but may not be able to be used based off your current build. So I'm going to show you the properties that you must have for the parameters in order for you to wield these weapons. The Astora Straight Sword is a really powerful, probably one of the strongest weapons you can get right off the gecko, uh, a faith weapon that you can absolutely just dominate with if you meet the required parameters. So just make sure that if you're using this, you're either using it with the right parameters or you can actually two-hand the weapon. And while two-handing, as long as you meet everything, you should be alright to hack and slash. Just don't go one-handed. I just wanted to show you the S-Doc as well, just the required parameters on that because it is a dexterity weapon and you do need a certain amount of strength to wield it as well, but again it's something I recommend. And then finally the Dragon Crest Shield, which is going to offer you 100% physical damage reduction, which you want on pretty much any shield you're going to use early on in the game because it's mainly physical enemies that you run into. Just don't challenge anything using lightning or magic because you will be absolutely ruined and wrecked when trying to block. Um, damage reduction is based off the values that you see from 100 and lower. So 100 is going to offer you 100% reduction, just keep that in mind. Now that we've achieved our two death runs in Yolando, we can start focusing on different areas. Now this next area is straight ahead from the bonfire when looking directly north if you were to be dropped off from the crow. This is going to lead you into a graveyard of some very annoying enemies for anyone who has a power down weapon and or bandit's knife, just like yours truly. I highly recommend you run past every enemy in this graveyard and just pick up what you need, including this winged spear, which is off to the right on the straightaway path. This is also something that has required parameters, and for this one it's a little higher than the other two, so just be mindful of that before you just automatically pick up and equip this. Now once you reach the tail end of the graveyard, you'll have the choice to go left or right. We're gonna go right because we're gonna have access and we're gonna pick up one of the strongest strength weapons in the game early on, and that is the Zweehander. Another weapon that takes a great deal of strength to use, just keep in mind that if you need X amount of strength, Depending on your base strength skill while two-handing, you can multiply that number by two, and if you meet the required parameter on the weapon, you will be able to wield that item. So just keep that in mind, because this Wii Hander is an absolute beast for somebody who wants to do the slow hack and slash. So respawning from the bonfire, we are now going to take the left path into a brand new area. And if you've watched up until this point, this is completely optional because this is for the more experienced players who can run through, you know, know what to expect, or if you're new, just have a great deal of patience because it is extremely rewarding to get through this and get to the end point, I promise you. Once you make it out of the hollowed room and you go past your first opening, you're going to follow my character and you're going to swing left because you're immediately going to have access to a bonfire, but you're going to kill a 
non-respawnable enemy who controls the skeletons in the area. This is the Necromancer. There are a lot of them down here, and this is the only one that we're going to look at killing early on because he's in the room that is supposed to be our safe haven. Once we kill him, we're going to push a switch that will open the next door when we proceed, and we're going to hit the bonfire. We're immediately going to start running again through that doorway, which is out and left from the bonfire room. We're going to run past every enemy that we see from this point. This might be a bit tedious and you will probably end up dying a few times. I highly recommend you utilize a shield and any additional souls that you get off the get-go I recommend building into endurance so that way running through these areas and blocking hits is easier. Just be mindful that when you block with your shield you will stagger, chances are, you know, you will be set back and if you're dealing with more than one enemy in front of you that could be bad, especially if you have a low amount of health. So from the pathway you see in front of you, you're going to hug out right to this waterfall area. And we're going to keep running through every skeleton that we see. You're going to come up on another switch. So coming from the last room that we came out of to this outside area, that switch is going to activate the bridge that you would normally see in front of you when running out. You're going to pick up the Soul of the Proud Knight, and you're going to be mindful of enemies and also a potential trap that you could hit and could impede you from running any further. And I purposely got hit by it so that way you could see it and hopefully that avoids you making that mistake. We are going through a literal live calm just because I want to do this run with any beginner who's new to the game so that way you can see everything that you're going to face going forward. So from here we're just going to keep running. You're going to go into this room once you cross the bridge down this world path and you're not going to run to the very end blindly. You're going to want to be mindful as you get to the lower parts. You're going to pass one final room and you're going to want to look down. Somebody left a note there. You'll probably see plenty of those in this area. Just people who want to be helpful if you're playing online. So if you're playing offline, don't look for the orange. Just follow my character. You're going to jump down two rock pop-outs and you're going to jump through a hole that is going to lead you to what would be to a newcomer, a very intimidating cutscene. This is the second blacksmith in the game, which just proves that we should not be in this area this early on. But we're not even going to talk to him, because there's nothing we can do with him at this point. It's nice to know that we can access him, and yeah, you know, great for anyone who officially knows his location this early on, because he will give you some useful weapons and things later on. But from this room, we're going to hug out to an opening in the wall. We're not going to go straight. We're going to ignore him because we have enemies behind us. We're going to hug the outside right wall and prepare for the biggest, most annoying ambush if you get caught in it. Uh, the wheeled skeletons. You do not want to get hit by them. They take out your health quick. They stagger you. And when they add up, it is just GG game over. If you made it to the end, congratulations. You're going to use this one opportune moment to make sure that you have full health before you roll down into this wide opening that is usually a clear indication of a Dark Souls boss battle. So in front of us, we have officially accessed and we are going to challenge the boss of the Catacombs. This is actually one of the easiest bosses in the game when you look at it from a standpoint of avoiding hits and taking damage, even though at the beginning of the game, you don't want to take damage from this boss. Yet again, he, she, it is fairly easy to dodge. It's just very tedious for somebody who has a non-upgraded weapon, or in once again, my case, the plus zero bandit's knife, which is actually my preference. Because with the bandit's knife, let me just say, chances are you picked a thief class if you're watching this video. Not only did you get the Master Key, you got the Bandit's Knife. I just want to add that with the Bandit's Knife, after a few hits, you'll add on and eventually achieve bleed damage on the actual boss, which kind of makes up for the lack of damage. So when you're approaching this boss, just keep at it with the DPS and eventually you'll get that bleed out of him, which is a really nice bonus. So before I fast forward with the video, I just want to explain to you guys how this boss moves. This boss tries to succeed on you by creating duplicates that on occasion will fire at you. 
most of the time it's the real boss who's trying to hit you with his spells. I also want to note, and I'm almost certain, that at the beginning of the game, being that this is a magic damage based boss, you do not have a shield that is going to reduce damage by 100%. So don't even try blocking against this boss, because chances are you're going to pay for that. Uh, he has two moves. He usually won't ever try and melee you. I'm almost certain that he doesn't melee. He's going to try and hit you with a flamethrower spell towards the end of this health bar, just because some of your Dark Souls bosses do get more difficult with progression. Not so much in this game. But at the beginning, he's going to be shooting these light light projectiles at you, which are really easy to dodge. All you really need to do is kind of loop around him, and I like to try and hit him towards his back. So if you could just rinse and repeat that, you'll eventually progress to where you take out the boss and you're rewarded with two very amazing pickups early on. One of those items is a PvP essential. I think a lot of people would agree uh, upon the actual boss drop. So once you kill the boss, look for that. And then the item that you get for defeating the boss. These are both very rewarding things. So hopefully you're really happy with what you get through the end of this trial. But once again, I just want to say that if you attempt this, you're doing it with no souls, you know. Everything is precious at this point. There's an item that you can save up for at the beginning of the game. We'll, we'll save that for another video. But just being able to invest into your level is a nice thing in itself. So every soul counts at this point. Just keep mind of that. With all that being said, we're going to fast forward to the end of the boss fight. And we're going to look at our two goodies that we pick up for defeating Pinguia. So if you made it up to this point, I just want to say once again, congratulations. You've defeated the boss of the catacombs early in Pinwheel, and with that we're rewarded with two very awesome items. At least things that grew and were just essential for my later playthroughs, because unfortunately for me, these were things I didn't have access to on my first one. You'll obtain the Rite of Kindling, and yes, you get Humanity and a Homeward Bone, which those weren't the additionals that I was talking about, but the Homeward Bone is going to get you out of here, which is really nice, because that's going to save you a bum. Uh, but with the Rite of Kindling, let me just touch on that really quick. The Rite of Kindling can actually be used to buff and essentially multiply the amount of uses that you get out of an Estus from just your random bonfires. And then run over to the boss remains to pick up the Mask of the Child, which... Comment down below, I'm almost certain the Mask of the Child is a 100% drop rate. Um, it might be possible to get the Mask of the Father, it's been so long. I could not tell you. But the Mask of the Child actually increases stamina recovery, and is one of the most used items in Dark Souls 1 PvP. So being able to pick that up, I just want to say, pat on the back, this is going to benefit you to have this at level 1, level 3, level 4, and when I say level 1, level 3, leveling up but a few times. So now, the Rite of Kindling, once again, that's going to increase your Estus uses on bonfires. So I'm going to showcase to you how to kindle a bonfire once receiving the Rite of Kindling. The humanity that I mentioned earlier in my video, you're going to pop one of those, and you'll see the counter 1 in your circle next to your health and stamina meter. You're going to sit at the bonfire and offer humanity through re reverse hollowing. This is going to turn you into a human being, which I'm going to showcase this to you. This is what you're going to look for if you're a new player. If you take your headpiece off and you see the human features, congratulations, you're human. You can officially kindle your bonfire at the cost of one humanity per. So by popping another humanity, we're, we're going to see the counter one again, which you can pop multiple if you choose, but I recommend you do one at a time because you don't want to die and, and lose. You definitely don't want to do that. So with the one that we have, we're going to take that and we're going to Kindle. By selecting the Kindle option, we went from 5 Estus to 10. And that's indicated because I was sitting at a 10 Estus bonfire. I went up to a 5 one, which didn't restore my 9 to 10. By Kindling, it brought the number 9 to 10 basically multiplying the 5 Estus that I had, making it 10. So anytime you die, you're getting 10 heals off that one station. 
So use your humanity accordingly. If you're in a difficult area, feel free to kindle that bonfire. This is going to be a big help for any new player who's taking on Dark Souls this early on. So with everything being said, we're going to stop here for the beginners, just because I don't want to overwhelm you with pickups, items, and just things of that nature. But hopefully you guys enjoyed everything I offered in this video. Preview for next video on the screen, I'm going to show you guys just a few NPCs that you can pick up more things from. But again, we're going to save that. So shout out to my magic users, this next video is catered to you. But hopefully you guys enjoy everything, and hopefully it runs into what you eventually want to achieve in your builds, and hopefully the healing properties of what we picked up benefit you in the more difficult areas. I've been Gia Quinto, this is Essential Things, and where to find them, episode 1. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed the live comm format. I'm going to try and stick to my traditional approach in the next video. But again, I know how important it is for somebody who's starting the game out, and I want to give you guys that boost. So, if you've watched this far in, I just want to say thank you, and I'll see you next video. This has been Gia, I'll catch you later.